Hi there, welcome to The Great Updraft. You're here with Ross. I make weekly videos with tools for self-transformation, so do subscribe for the latest. In this video, you're going to learn all the key points of a crucial theory from one of my favourite thinkers, who is Ken Wilber. And you're going to learn how this relates to self-transformation. And this key theory that we're going to cover today is called the AQUAL framework. So what is the AQUAL framework? Well, it is essentially a theoretical meta framework for understanding how human beings work, very high level, very broad. And a lot of its com components are psychological, which is why it really interests me. But also it, it allows for an endless number of factors. We're going to be looking more at the psychological side of things though. Equal itself means all quadrants, all levels. AQAL, all quadrants, all levels. But there are several other areas that it covers and we're going to get into those in a minute. What AQUAL can do for us in terms of self-transformation is it can give us a, a full broad whole outlook on what growth is and it gives us a nice map for both for guiding our efforts and also for telling us what steps we should be taking and how we can plan our self-improvement efforts and the parts that we are missing out perhaps. It gives us a cohesive framework for understanding the process of growth in human beings and a very broad one at that. It points us to the various areas of growth. So while many frameworks or many you know, self-help teachers or many areas of self-help just focus on one area of growth of the human being. What AQUAL allows us to do is it allows us to see them all in context, in relation to each other, and also to highlight areas that we may tend to miss out or just plain be, be unaware of. And it also has us realise, in a more deeper sense, has us realise that Growth is very broad, it's very deep, and it's essentially unlimited. So often we we grow very well in one area and leave out other areas, or we grow well in several areas and leave out other areas. And what this framework does is it because it's so broad, it helps us to see our blind spots. And it also helps us to see that even in those areas that we are doing well in, the growth potential there is very high and so it, it it really helps us put things in perspective and also yeah as I said guide our efforts and I actually have a, an ebook explaining this AQUAL model in much more detail this is just going to be an introductory video but if you want to check out more especially on the levels and the quadrants of the of the theory then please head to the link in the description for that ebook but for now, let's get more to more of the details of what AQUAL is before we look at how can it how it can really inform our self transformation. So, as I said, AQUAL stands for all quadrants, all levels. That's what AQAL stands for. But AQUAL also includes other factors. So it means all quadrants, all levels, all lines all states and all types and we're going to explain those five areas just now. So the, the first area there, the AQ, the all quadrants, this refers to the four quadrants and what the all part means is that we want to take all of those into account. The four quadrants are basically four fundamental perspectives on any subject or any area of reality and these four quadrants all play a vital role in that phenomenon very sort of philosophical this. The four quadrants are made up of collective and individual multiplied by subjective and objective. So it's, if you pair those off in twos, you get four different pairs and hence you get four quadrants. So you can really apply these four quadrants to any phenomena that you could imagine. And we won't be doing that here because that would take a long time. But what we're going to look at is just a brief overview of what it means for a human being. What what are the four quadrants if we look at a human being, or if we look at human life? Well, the four quadrants are split into the, the upper quadrants and the lower quadrants and then the left quadrants and the right quadrants. So 
the upper left quadrant is the individual and it's subjective. So what this really means is it's, it's our first person experience. That's what the upper left quadrant means or it. It's studying and the subjective experience of an individual. So this includes our, our emotions, our thoughts, our beliefs, our experience of being a certain person, all our body sensations and also our, our reactions on our psychological life. The upper right quadrant is also an individual quadrant, but it's the objective side of the individual. So this is where we, we get into science and biology and physics and stuff like this. So in human beings, this looks like genes, the brain and all the brain activity, neurons and neural networks and so on, atoms, the human body, the nervous system and all of the good stuff from biology. The lower left quadrant, let's move, move into the lower quadrants now. The lower left is collective subjective. So whereas the upper left is individual subjective, this is collective subjective. So the lower quadrants are collective quadrants. And what the collective subjective quadrant covers is factors, like cultural factors, such as language, shared understanding, interpersonal dynamics, and how we relate to each other from within, so to speak. And onto the final quadrant, the lower right quadrant, this is also a collective, but it's on the objective side. So the upper right is individual objective, the lower right is collective objective. And this covers things like the financial system, politics, the economy, and law, and so on. So it's these sort of objective factors that apply to everyone, or the objective factors of a collective human system. And the point here with the quadrants is, there's a few points here when it comes to self-transformation. Just in terms of our understanding of the world, first and foremost, we often certain favor, we often favor certain quadrants over the other ones. And actually whole disciplines favor certain quadrants over the others. And they, they sort of reject the other ones. They choose one or two, they focus on those. They claim those to be the only real quadrants that exist without knowing they do so. And they reject the other ones. Science is a good example of this. Science often is very upper right focused. It's individual objectives, so it's biology, it's the brain, it's, it's genes, it's Darwinian evolution and all this. With And everything gets reduced to brain activity. You know, uh, depression gets reduced to brain activity. Meditation states get reduced to brain activity. Psychedelic experiences get reduced to brain activity. Thanks a lot for that, science. <laughs> Self-help is often upper left biased, on the other hand, so it often focuses only on individual subjective factors like our thoughts and our emotions and all of this. What we want to do is we want to understand that the four quadrants are influencing us all the time and also the corollary to that is that we are always influencing the four quadrants and everything that happens in one quadrant all also happens in the other, so it has a correlate in the other quadrants. And this, this can inform our self-help, and we'll see soon why that is. Let's get on to, we've done AQ, let's get on to AL, which is all levels. These are basically the levels of human consciousness, and these are actually visible in all four quadrants, both historically, collectively, and in our personal life. So they, they are very broad, these levels of human consciousness. And there are levels of complexity, levels of love, there's different ways of looking at them. I've actually got a whole eight and a half hour course just looking at these levels. So <laughs> I could talk about this for a while. I'm not going to do so. I'm just going to give a very brief summary. These levels that Wilbur has laid out use theories from, theories from across the board. So people often talk about spiral dynamics and they often use that as like their, their framework. What integral theory does, or what the AQUAL framework, framework does, is actually looks at theories that are looking at levels in many different lines of the development, and it brings those all together into meta-levels that cover every single one of them. So that's what I'm going to talk about here when I summarise them. There are 12 altitudes, 12 levels or 12 altitudes, as the AQUAL 
framework also refers to them sometimes. And let's get into them here, just a very brief summary. So I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to say the color, and then I'm going to say the, the actual name or the descriptive name that's, all, uh, that's often used for each of these altitudes. So first of all, we've got infrared archaic, and this is really about basic survival. It's just, it's about the animal nature of the human being, the most basic needs that we have. Human consciousness is separable from its surroundings at this level. It's associated with hunter-gatherers and it often dominates in the early and later years of life. The next altitude we have, the next level of complexity is magenta magic. And this is a very, well, the, the clue is in the name. It's a magical stage and it's visible in young children, especially, although it, it stays with us. We give magical explanations for everything. This is also very visible in tribal culture where magical explanations are given for everything. The trees are alive, the, the rocks are alive, we have names, they're gods, they're guiding the weather and so on. Our imagination is confused with reality and this is still quite a very, a fairly basic level of consciousness. Next up, this is altitude three, is red magic mythic. And the themes of this stage are domination, egocentrism and power. Altitude four is the amber mythic stage. And this is all about mythic literal explanations. So it's, you know, we see this in fundamentalists who take, you know, the Bible literally word by word to be true or the Quran or whatever spiritual text, although it's not limited just to religion and spirituality. This is quite a conformist stage and it's, it's our identity is sort of consumed within a group. And this also ties into the fundamentalist aspect again. Next up, it's orange rational, and this is associated with modernity and science. So it's, it's, it's a rational stage. It's achiever oriented. It's sort of individualistic oriented. And you can see this in the culture at large, very much so in the 21st century. We've got green postmodern, which is about sensitivity and multiculturalism, minority rights, green culture, eco culture. This is very visible also. Then what we have actually, once we've gone past green postmodern, we get to the second tier. And this is a big jump because it's going from scarcity needs to abundance needs. The first second tier level is called teal integral. And this is holarchical and there's a centauric awareness now. So our identity is very fluid and flexible and we want to deliberately incorporate these earlier levels and look forward to higher ones. This is the first level that actually appreciates the many levels involved in this process. And this also brings an evolutionary view of life. The next stage on in second tier, this is a second, second tier level is a turquoise, I'm going to call it mature integral. Doesn't actually really have a, a name as such, but I'm going to call it mature integral. This is more holistic. It's more about awareness. It's more about being this than the teal integral stage was. And then we actually have another jump and we go on to third tier now. And this is, this includes four stages in classic equal. This are, these are all transpersonal spiritual stages. And this is where our identity actually, we, we become spiritual in our identity and we actually transcend ourselves. And this is actually, Maslow highlighted this in his hierarchy of needs, his transpersonal needs reflect this third tier. So that's a quick summary of the altitudes and we're gonna get, this is like a really key area for our, or a key tool that we can use for our growth. And we'll be getting onto that in just a minute. Let's move on to the, the third component, which is all lines. Now, you may have heard of Howard Gardner's research into the, the multiple intelligences that we have. Basically, this guy from Harvard discovered that we have many intelligences, it's not just the classic IQ intelligence, cognitive intelligence, we actually have many. We have interpersonal, emotional, musical, kinesthetic, mathematical, linguistic, we have values intelligence, we have morals intelligence. And really what AQUAL does is it takes this, this 
was one of the inspirations for AQUAL. What AQUAL does is says that basically any area of human competence is a line, it's an area of development. And what Wilbur has claimed is that all of these, all human competencies, all areas of human development are governed by all of the fundamental altitudes of development, all of the fundamental levels from the previous part of the AQUAL framework. So all lines, again, that's another really crucial area for self-transformation. It's a crucial tool for self-transformation. Next, we move on to all states. So what is all states about? Well, the states part is talking about the five major states of human consciousness. These were discovered by Daniel P. Brown, another Harvard researcher who looked into schools, East and West and ancient and modern. What he found is that if you practice, if you do spiritual practice, you go through certain levels and these levels are have been documented in many of the world's major traditions. And these actually are aligned with the major states of human consciousness that are correlated with certain brain waves. And we're going to talk about what these five major levels are. They go from gross, ordinary waking consciousness all the way up to non-dual. So let's start off at gross. This is ordinary waking consciousness. It's our sense of being a self that's separate from the world around us. There's, you know, the Buddhists talk about the monkey mind. This monkey mind is associated with the gross state because it's associated with having a very strong sense of identity and our thoughts and our mental life are a huge part of that. The second state is called the subtle state. So this is actually, once we've practiced some meditation, for example, we start to see beyond this gross waking state. We see beyond our separate sense of self a little bit. We start contacting something beyond it. And this subtle state is associated with, say, spiritual visions, like spiritual images, spiritual thoughts, and, you know, say, being spoken to with God or having a conversation with God. You know, we have to book conversations with God. This is sort of from the, the, the subtle state because it's still mental, but it's moving into sort of spiritual mental. The next one is the causal, where we go even beyond the subtle now and we start contacting sort of more the ground of everything, the ground of all sensations, the ground of all consciousness. And this strengthens at the next state, which is the witness state, which is where we realize that we are not our thoughts or our emotions or our body. And we're actually something way beyond that. And this is, this is actually called classical enlightenment in Buddhism. This is like the starting point of true enlightenment or the path of enlightenment is reaching this witness state or what Aqual calls the witness state. And then after that is what we have as non-dual, which is the final state. And that is basically an identity with everything that is going on in our surroundings, an identity with the furniture, an identity with the sky, an identity with the ocean, with other people, with everything that's going on around us. And yeah, if you're into spirituality, you have heard of non-duality and it's, it's useful to see it in this context as being the final state or the highest state in a chain of ever increasing levels of spiritual awareness. Great. Let's move on to the final area of the equal framework then. And that is, that is all types. So we've had four previous ones. Now we're on to all types. And what the all types aspect covers is typologies. So Typologies such as a Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram. We're talking about personality types here. And the what role it plays in the AQUAL framework is that the types are independent of all the other factors, of all the other aspects. So we could be at any stage of development or any altitude of development and are and have any type. And as we say advance through the, the, the levels of development, we, our type doesn't change. It's, it's a constant. We could also have birth charts and star signs, for example. These are other typologies. And I think this is a, a really important addition to this framework because it helps us see that 
okay, we have states, which is great. We have, you know, those are levels of spiritual transformation. We also have the stages of development, the basic levels of development. We have the lines of the development. We have many different areas in which we can develop, but also we have typologies and these are like, they sort of define who we are as a personality, regardless of how, how evolved we are in these other areas. So yeah, a really important addition to the framework, I think. Well, let's now talk about, so we've talked about all quadrants, all levels, all states, all lines and all types. What I want to talk about now is just how this relates to self-transformation. And Wilbur has actually talked about this himself. He's laid out four areas of growth or four main areas of growth ba based on the equal framework. Growth in the state realm is called waking up, you know, enlightenment or waking up. It has that vibe to it. This is where we, we deliberately go into higher states or we download higher states. We have like peak experiences of higher states. We also have growing up, which is stage growth, which is something that we're always engaged in. And well, often it happens that we, we at, you know, age, when we're born, we move through certain levels. We download, we download, we download. Once we reach a certain age, we, we don't grow anymore. That's sort of what seems to be the norm. But growing up is a, is a conscious attempt to move into higher altitudes, to download higher altitudes. We also have opening up, which is to grow in different lines of development. So not only do we want growing up in terms of downloading higher altitudes, but we also want to do that in different lines. And we also want to open up to growth across many lines because that gives us sort of a holistic, a holistic transformation. But it's not, you know, we don't have to grow in every single line. You know, it's, it's, the way I see it is about identifying our weak points. It's about, say, if I'm low in interpersonal skills, then I can work on that. And I know that that's an actual area of, of human intelligence. And it gives me a certain, it gives me a framework for this. It's not about mastering every level of the human being. That would be like playing a, a sandbox video game and trying to master all the areas in it. It doesn't really tend to happen like that. And people, we have an, an equalizer. You know, if you look at a music equalizer, it has different levels and or many different levels all bouncing up and down. Sim similar things happening in our lines of development. We also have what's called cleaning up. Now this, this sort of relates to both stages and states. And what cleaning up is, it's shadow work. It's about cleaning up repressed psychological material. The kind of thing that Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud talked about and that is another really crucial area of, of, of growth. And it's one that Wilbur set, sets out. So we've got growing up, waking up, cleaning up and opening up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to look quickly at where this comes into my work. So I take a very holistic view on self-transformation. And for me, the equal framework guides me in it. It has me, it's like a, it's a sanity check for me. If I'm missing anything out, if I'm, being partial in my point of view. If I'm giving partial advice to people or I'm not taking into account the factors, all the factors that I could be taking into account. I've got seven pillars for self-transformation and really these areas of the, the four sort of areas of growth taught about in equal, I cover all of these. So growing up, comes into all of my pillars because I'm always talking about integrating previous levels. Maybe I don't say that explicitly, but I'm using it implicitly to inform my work. And I'm also always talking about pushing into higher levels. So if I'm talking about finances, for example, I always talk about satisfying our basic financial needs. I always talk about how do we how do we make good money doing what we're doing, but also undergird that with higher principles based on higher levels of development, such as a benevolent purpose, you know, act, enacting a benevolent vision is one of my pillars. And it also comes into self mastery and interpersonal skills as well, which are two of my other pillars. Growing up really informs much of what I do. 
waking up, where does that come into my work? Well, the spirituality pillar, I've got an entire pillar just for spirituality. And so waking up is definitely part of mine, of my work. The cleaning up part, I would really put this into my self mastery pillar because self mastery for me, how I define it is, it's about getting to know ourselves psychologically, our sticking points, our repressed aspects, the things that we aren't taking responsibility for and so on. And so cleaning up is definitely part of that. Opening up as well, to me, my pillars are a good model for opening up. I'm not saying I cover absolutely all of the lines of human development. I don't. But the way that I covered many different areas in search for a holistic transformation, search for a holistic view of human growth, this is very in much informed by the idea of opening up and being open to growth in many, many areas in life. And it's, yeah, to me, that's the most fulfilling way to go and the, the way to live a, to have a holistic transformation and not be, not have really strong areas and then be really limited by others because it's not, that's not a good way to, to go, to live, to live life. Also show how these pillars connect to one another and, and how they inform one another rather than sort of dividing them apart and splitting them and saying, oh, this is more important. This, this is on its, you know, it's, I see this a lot and what I try to do is bring them all together and have them all inform each other and have us one area of growth bringing us up in another area and informing it. So my work really is informed by the, the AQUAL framework. And really, if we, if we step back a little bit, if we look at this AQUAL framework in the context of self-transformation, it really just shows us what is this whole self-transformation thing about? What is the, if we, what is like the broadest perspective on it? What is all the ways that we can grow? What are all the ways that we are growing in? And where's this growth actually leading us? What does this, what does growing even mean? And to me, the equal framework really helps me understand that and helps me step back and see the bigger picture. Also help me see my potential because much of these higher levels, they're beyond what most people are able, what most people reach and what our culture at large, even in the most advanced countries, reaches at the moment. And it really opens up the doors. It really it inspires me and it, it inspires me to keep growing as a person and to, to realize that hmm, there's actually something, you know, I'm here to, to live these levels. I'm here to download these higher states or these higher altitudes and to open up to all lines of development. So that's that. I've been just giving a short introduction to the equal framework and how it relates to my work and how it relates to self-transformation at large. Again, for a detailed but concise summary of this theory, more detailed than I've been able to go into here, do look at, have a look at my ebook integral meta theory condensed. I'm going to put a link to that in the description. If you're new here, come and say hello in the comments section. And for all of you, I want you to tell me which of these areas in your growth. So if it's growing up, cleaning up, waking up or opening up, which of these you've tended to overlook in your journey of self transformation and be really interested to hear your story. Make sure to subscribe for the latest videos and I'll see you next time. Thank you.